Hey guys, Dirt Diggler with Dirt Fish in America. We're here at our first site on the first day of our New England trip. First 15 minutes, we found uh, some colonial buttons. We're having a great time. It's beautiful here. Um, Connecticut Todd was nice enough to get us on some great property. Old farmhouse used to be behind here, so we're, we're pretty hopeful that we're gonna run across something good, but uh, really excited to be here. Uh, we, we can't wait. We are looking for the elusive large scent and Spanish silver. Yes! And within seconds, I had my first signal, something that I wasn't prepared for. Whatever I've got here is old. I don't know what it is, but uh, it's brass. I had no idea. Apparently, I found something collectible. It's an ox knob. A peculiar looking object the locals called an ox knob. They don't do ox knobs in uh, Idaho. See this thing? What you did was, you know, you had oxen work in this field that we're in. Yeah. And the oxen, they grow horns. Oh, right. Sharp horns. You would screw this down over the horn, and then you cut the end of the horn off so the ox didn't stab you with his horn. Huh. When you're working all day, it's an ox knob. They're common in colonial oh. sites. Huh. Shortly thereafter, GK Man called us over to check out his colonial era find. Yeah. Be interesting to see if it still rings when we wash it out. Yeah. <laughs> A crotal bell from the 1700s. Crotal bells were secured to horses and wagons and served as a warning device to help make their presence known. Yep, goes in the good couch. We're in the right spot. Yep. First day, first about 15 minutes of our New England hunt. And I, I ended up getting the first the first coin out of five guys here. Not, not doing anything special, it's just luck. But uh, look at that, boom, 1864 Indian head penny. Loving it, this is awesome. Let's hope for more to come, all right guys? It was almost like we, we first arrived at the field and then started getting, you know, time period artifacts, boom, right off the bat. TJ actually found uh, the first large scent. Hey! He's already got oh, one! Uh, what? Yeah, dude! You, <laughs> you! Look at that! What a, what a turd! You can make a horse drink! CT Todd look called us over to show off what he presumed was the first large scent we would see on the trip. But little did we know, while we were digging up crotal bells and ox knobs, Pickhead was quietly Got exhuming it. his very first U.S. large scent. It's like a large scent. We'll clean it up when we get back. Did you film it? No. Film what? Yes, I filmed okay. it. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. Hmm. The copper. Toasty? It's kind of toasty. Green disc. Well, if you, to if to you, be determined later. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Nice find, man. Nice. Wow. Here's a good indication that there was a colonial house on this property because I'm coming across these clamshells. High in protein and readily available, clams were a favorite among the colonies. CT Todd's calling us over. Sounds like he's got something good. What we were about to witness was true colonial treasure. I dug my favorite thing, and I wish you guys had dug it instead of me. I've dug plenty of them. Spanish Real. Oh, you're kidding me! You know, I left my detector right where I just oh. dug it. So you guys come with me. Let's just go there. I was just prospecting going yeah. across that green field right there, and oh. bang, hit this Real. Wow. That's a one, that's a one Real, 1784. Dude, yeah, that's probably the only piece of Spanish silver we're gonna see on this trip. A little bit jealous it wasn't my find, because that is like number one on my list right now, but totally stoked to just be there and watch that come out of the ground. You got that Spanish real, but I got one of these. Whoa! Nice. Yeah, a little wheel thing. You don't get awesome. a cog every day. I can't believe CT Todd just pulled out Spanish silver right under my nose. Oh, that guy. That is sweet, man. With newfound motivation, we split up and scoured the hills in search for more. Well, it was a one cent. It got chopped up by a disc, by a farm plow or something. Unless they couldn't have on purpose. Oftentimes, coins were cut into pieces to make do for change. I think I just dug a first for me. I think I dug a colonial musket ball. So the area that we're in now we know was settled 
in about the 1720s. So obviously it goes back a long way. Um, you know, for a guy from Idaho that's that's been in this hobby for the opportunity for uh, Dr. Tones, Dirt Diggler, Pickhead, and I to come out here and hunt. It's a it's really a dream come true. If you really just stop and contemplate and think about the significance even something like this has, um, the lives that were attached to it. This is really a piece of American history. This is what this hobby is all about. This is a fantastic find for me. This is definitely going in the box. The energy in the air leaves me chomping at the bit for my first piece of New England colonial coinage. As I hone in on a good sounding target, my pulse begins to race. I think I see a coin. Dear, sweet, seven pound, nine ounce baby Jesus. Please let this be a colonial coin. I'm pretty sure it is. Look at that, boom. Moment of truth. <laughs> it's a coin, it says CB. I don't know what that means. It's unlike any coin I've ever dug before. Anxious to get a glimpse, Dirt Diggler comes running. <laughs> so, it's, it says like CB, CB, CB stamped all over oh, it. Oh, dude. What is that? Damn, dude. That's awesome. I mean, dang. I think it stands for coin branding. It looks like it, like it might have been a large scent that someone hammered and counter stamped or something. In the 18th century, it was very common for merchants to advertise their services by stamping coins, especially large scents. That's what I presume this is. About two feet from where I just found that uh, colonial coin. Boom, flat button baby. Because the zipper wasn't invented yet, everything was held together by buttons. And when you start finding buttons, that means coins are close by. Another large scent, so we'll clean that baby up and see what year it is. That's cool. Copper coins found in farm fields are typically heavily corroded, due in part to modern fertilizers. We've got a good target here in the hole. I'm not sure if it's a giant flat button or if it's a coin. Man, I don't know. That is something else, though. Clean it up back at the house and see if we can't pull anything off of it, but I don't, I don't think we're going to be able to get anything off of that. As the day drew to an end, we continued to find evidence that our colonial brothers and sisters lived in this very field. We wanted to find Spanish Real. Um, Todd found one, which is great. Uh, very excited for him for that. A uh, large sense or something that um, we were looking for out here also, and found some of those as well. Fun day, but it's yeah, it's gonna be brutal. After 14 days of this, uh, we're gonna be pretty, pretty tired, I think. So, are you gonna do anything different tonight? I'm sleeping in the hallway tonight, actually. So, you know, uh, when somebody can snore through earplugs, it's a bad deal. <laughs> I won today. Just FYI, the pros in there. Stay tuned for more sneak peeks of our full-featured film, Dirt Fish in America, the movie.